Hello, I'm doing a book review, and the book I want to review is The Rats by James Herbert. Now, The Rats was published in 1974, and this is James Herbert's first novel. Now, James Herbert would go on to write books like The Fog, which has no relation with the John Carpenter film of the same name, The Survivor, Shrine, Haunted, and many others. Now, James Herbert was a very famous British horror novelist who unfortunately died in 2013. Now, I've heard him described as the British Stephen King, and I don't know if that's really a fair comparison because both authors came about pretty much at the same time. Like, both their debut novels were published in 1974. Now, James Herbert is an author that I've heard about for years, and actually my grandparents have an apartment down in Florida, and at this apartment complex down in the lobby, there's actually a bookshelf that last time I was there had a bunch of James Herbert novels on it. Looking back on it, I probably should have stolen those, but... I don't know if maybe they had cameras there, so it's probably best that I didn't steal them, but... I kind of wish I did steal them. Now, this is my first James Herbert novel, and after reading this, I'm definitely interested in checking out more of his work. Now, one of my subscribers has asked me multiple times if I would review this book, so this review is kind of a request that I'll admit I kind of took my sweet-ass time with, and I didn't really do that on purpose, and I did kind of promise the guy that I would get around to this review in March, and of course, now it's almost June. So I apologize to the person who requested this review for taking so long. Now, as I said, The Rats was James Herbert's first book, and this is actually one of his most famous novels. Like, when people think James Herbert, this is one of the books that comes to mind. Now, one of the primary inspirations for this book, believe it or not, was actually Universal's Dracula. It was the scene where Dwight Fry as Renfield was going on that spiel about all of Dracula's rats, where he was saying, Rats! Rats! Hundreds of them! Thousands! And yes, I know, my Dwight Fry impression was horrible. But actually, that scene from Universal's Dracula was one of the main inspirations for this novel. Now, in the 1970s, there were actually quite a few killer animal novels and killer animal movies. As far as movies are concerned, in the early 1970s, you had films like Frogs, Night of the Lepus, and Phase 4, which was about killer ants. And then, of course, you had this novel, and the same year as this novel, you had Peter Benchley's Jaws, which a year later would be made into the classic Steven Spielberg film, and that really opened the floodgates for killer animal movies. You also had the Night of the Crabs novels by Guy N. Smith, and this book very much fit in with all that. Now, one of the reasons why I think the killer animal genre was so big in the 1970s was because even though the environmentalist movement started before the 70s, the 70s was really when it got into full gear and was really when I think a lot of people actually started to give a shit about what we're doing to the environment, and this was also when the oil crisis was going on. So, with stuff like that, you could see how in pop culture, stories about nature turning against us would be so popular. Now, the plot of the rats is basically giant mutant rats invade London, specifically the poorer areas of London, but they do spread. Now, eventually the British government finds out about this, but they're powerless to stop them, and... Soon it becomes apparent that these rats, if they're allowed to spread, could potentially destroy all of London and maybe even all of England, and it also becomes apparent that these things could spread to other countries as well. 
and these rats are multiplying at a rapid rate, and they also carry a deadly disease where even if you manage to get away from them, if you get bitten by them, you're pretty much dead already. Now, the main character of the novel is this school teacher named Harris, who, in the beginning of the novel, one of his students is killed by these rats, and he ends up helping the authorities in trying to fight these creatures. Now, I thought The Rats was an excellent horror novel, and the book moves at an extremely fast pace, despite the fact that there are a lot of subplots in the book, but the subplots, in my opinion, do not slow the story down. The story still moves at a very brisk pace. And the book is actually really suspenseful, especially considering the fact that these rats carry this deadly disease where even if you manage to not get eaten by these things, if you get bitten by them, you're pretty much fucked because later you're going to end up dying a horrible death anyway, and you almost get this idea that the people who do get eaten by the rats are almost the lucky ones in a way. And it's actually a really creepy book, too, and the rats are freaking terrifying in this book. And this is kind of a spoiler, but towards the end of the novel, you find out about this other species of rats that are almost like the overlords for the main rats that you see in the novel. And these rats are freaking terrifying and are really freaking creepy. And the way these rats are described at the end of the book, is almost Lovecraftian in a way where you get the idea that Herbert is only describing a small portion of these creatures, like, you're not even getting the full picture, like, you almost get the idea that these, this, like, other species of rats is so horrifying that the human mind almost can't even bear it. And one thing I love about this is you never truly find out what made these rats the way they are. You do get kind of an explanation on where they came from, but you still don't know exactly why they're the way they are. Now, if I'm remembering it correctly, I think nuclear testing is mentioned as a possible theory on how these rats became mutated, but even that's just a theory. And I actually really liked some of the subplots in this book and some of the side characters in this novel. In some ways, the side characters and the characters who show up in the subplots are in some ways more interesting than the main protagonist of this novel. And almost every character in this book has his or her own backstory to them. Even some of the side characters that you know are eventually going to to get killed by the rats, James Herbert still gives you backstory for a lot of these characters, and you actually find yourself really empathizing with a lot of these characters, even the ones that you know are eventually going to get eaten by the rats, and it gives you a real sense that these are actual people we're dealing with, like not so much characters, but he makes his characters really feel like actual people. Now, one of the first people you see get killed by the rats in this novel is this gay man who is introduced right in the opening chapter, and you find out that he lost his previous job because of his homosexuality. Like, it's not said flat out, but you get the idea that it was because he was gay that he was fired. So he's a really sympathetic character that you really start to empathize with, and right when you start to really empathize with this guy, you see him get viciously killed by the rats. And also, later on in the novel, there's a whole chapter devoted to uh, this homeless alcoholic woman, and he actually gives you, like, 20 pages of her backstory, and she has a really tragic backstory that could have worked in its own story, and 
he presents this, like, really tragic and sympathetic character, and once again, he just sadistically kills her off in the book. And I know some people complained about that, but that's something I actually really liked, because it showed that even the side characters, even just the random victims of the rats, are not just cannon fodder, they're actual people. There's also this brutal scene earlier on in the book where a baby is killed by the rats. Now, there is actually quite a bit of social commentary in this book. Like, in the book, there's a lot of emphasis on these poorer communities and the lack of sanitation in these communities, and you get this idea that these rats would have never been able to spread the way they did had the government paid more attention to these lower-class communities and actually took care of them and and paid attention to proper sanitation. And there's a lot of commentary on the upper class ignoring the problems of the lower class and the consequences of them doing this. And I know James Herbert actually did grow up in a lot of poverty-stricken areas, so it seems like a lot of the commentary on the lower class versus the upper class was kind of personal for him in some ways. Also in the book, there's a lot of emphasis on buildings that were destroyed during the Second World War when the Germans bombed England. And the book talks about how a lot of these buildings were never rebuilt after they were destroyed during World War II. And maybe I'm reaching here with this analysis, but since this was only a little over 30 years after the German bombings of London, I kind of get the idea that the shadow of World War II was still sort of felt over the people of England at the time, and maybe the rats are sort of a metaphor for that. Once again, I could be reaching way deeper than was actually intended with that. And also, I would probably be able to speak to that more if I actually lived in London at the time this book was published. But yeah, The Rats is a great book, and I definitely recommend it if you haven't read it yet. Now, James Herbert actually wrote three sequels to this book. There was Layer in 1979, Domain in 1984, and the final book of the Rat series was The City, which was published in 1993, and The City was actually a graphic novel. Now, there was a film adaptation of this book called Deadly Eyes, which came out in 1982. Now, I saw bits and pieces of this film when I was a little kid, but I never saw the movie in its entirety. Now, I have seen reviews of it on YouTube, and from what I can gather, the film is only loosely based on the novel. The only thing the movie, from what I can tell, really has in common with the book is it's about killer rats, and the main character is a school teacher. That's about it, and the baby scene is in the movie as well, but for the most part, the film is a very loose adaptation of the book. So yeah, that was my review on The Rats by James Herbert and... Ah!